before I do move into the main news, let me share with you one very special thing. I'll be giving you, um, you know, the special offer that I said for 2020 in terms of personal branding, in terms of resume rebrand, in terms of interview coaching or job hunt strategy. This is a one-time offer that I'll be giving you. So if you are interested, I would say grab it now because later on um, when the new year starts, it goes back to normal. So there are 14 days. So I would suggest, sorry, 15 days. So I suggest you take advantage if you are serious about your brand. Um, You know, send me a message and we can take it on. Now, now coming to the main news, the, the big, big news. Okay, so what is the big news? The big news is, uh, this is from my contacts and connections. Um, around the range is five to 7,000 companies. Okay, five to 7,000 companies are going to shut down in UAE in the next year. This is as per market speculation by business contacts and people that I know. Now, why am I saying five to 7,000 companies? Okay, here's what I'll tell you. Uh, okay, let's, let's go on slowly. Let's go on slowly. The first part. Okay, now, if l- let me explain to you this way. If you are a main company, if you are a main company, and um, let's say you took many people's uh, service, let's say uh, you invited people and said, come participate in this project, we're going to have a big project. So all these guys came and they said, okay, we will participate, we'll bring you the raw materials, we will supply you the manpower, we'll take part in this project. So the main guy, executed the project, small guys supplied the materials, supplied the manpower, supplied everything. Finally, the project was done, payment was received. Now, this guy, this main guy has got his payment. The small guys are waiting for their payment because after they get their money, they will pay the money to the people who they took the raw materials from and then it goes like a domino effect. Now, just ask yourself if this main guy who completed the project thanks to these guys, okay, they completed the project. Now they got the money, but now they decided not to give the money. They said, sorry, we will give you the money later on. And one fine day, this main guy shuts down. So if he shuts down or declares bankruptcy, the main guys have taken all the money and the company is just a skeleton and then it shuts down. What will happen to these small key players? What will happen to them? They will go to court. They will make a big noise. They will have to spend extra money uh, to go to court and all that. In the end, they'll get nothing. And if they get nothing, they can't pay their employees. They can't pay their uh, suppliers. And if they shut down, those suppliers who are depending on the money, they also endure a loss. And their employees endure a loss. And it goes on like like a, I don't know, like a nuclear bomb. Okay, it goes on and on. Now, why am I sharing this? Because um, one main company, Arab Tech, one main company, Arab Tech, it has executed so many projects. It has taken so many service providers. It has taken so many vendors of it. It has taken so, so many people who supplied stuff to it, manpower, whatever. They did not pay them. Now, what I did is I contacted a few people. I contacted a few people. I did a little bit of research. And this is what I want to share with you. Now, I want you to hear me out. And after you listen to this video, you tell me, you tell me if I'm right or wrong. Okay, this is my research. First, I'll give my research. And then you tell me if my prediction that seven, five to 7,000 companies are going to shut down. And that will impact even the expats who are there. Okay, so hear me out. Now, let's start with the foundation. The foundation is Mudabala. Okay, the foundation Mudabala. Now, what is Mudabala? Do your research. But this is what I found. Mudabala is an investment company which is Emirati state-owned. Okay, owned by Abu Dhabi. It's a sovereign wealth fund. So, it's, you know, right up there. Okay. It was established in January 2017 as a public joint stock company merging Mudabala Development and International Petroleum Investment Company. And it's owned by the Abu Dhabi government. 
Okay. So owned by the big boys, the government itself. Who are the key people, the owners of this? His Highness Sheikh Mohammed Zayed Al Nayan is the chairman. Khaldun Khalifa Al Mubarak is the CEO and managing director. So you can do the research. These are the people. So what was the revenue? As for 2017, that's what I got. It was 165 billion, 165 billion dirhams. Let that sink in. Okay. Uh, operating income was 10 billion. Total assets was 369 billion. That's, I think, roughly 100 billion. Okay. Uh, equity was 258 billion. All these are in dirhams. Number of employees, 11,000. Subsidiaries, Piago, Airspace, Mudabla Development, and its website is mudabla.com. Okay. So these were the facts. Now, a little bit of controversy, shocking bits. The shocking bits was Mudabla was formed after Kadim al Kubesi, ex managing director of IPIC, was arrested and his company's involvement in the 1MDB scandal. You can just Google search and find out more about that information. And also, you'll find out that. Sheikh Nayan was actually speaking to the, uh, you know, that Prime Minister of uh, Malaysia over the 1MDB scandal. And you also have this, this slightly plum guy, I don't know what is his name, that fat guy who was involved in, he was a brainchild, I don't know what his name, Peng Jun or something. He was the main guy, he called up uh, Sheikh Zayed and he said, you know, help me out and this and that and whatever. Uh, Al Jazeera has given a documentary, so check that out. Okay. So, Mudabla's mandate was to facilitate the diversification of Abu Dhabi's economy manage on long-term capital-intensive investments to deliver strong financial returns, okay? Now, the company also owns Advanced Technology uh, Investment Company, ATIC, a high-tech investment company and owner of Global Foundries, which is the second largest semiconductor foundry company by revenue, okay? In March 2020, Mudabla Investment Company joined a consortium of investment this now comes to the United States with $2.25 billion in Alphabet. You know Google? Alphabet? In an Alphabet-owned self-driving technology called W-A-Y-M-O. Vamo. Vamo? Okay. Now in June 2020, this was March. June 2020, Mudabla Investment Company announced an investment of $1.2 billion in Reli Reliance Geo platform for a 18, 1.85 stake, 1.85, valuing Mukesh Ambani's telecom venture Geo at $65 billion, huh? US dollars. For December 31st, 2019, Mudabla in total revenue reached $853 billion. Billion, I think that's in the So just... Just let that sink in. It's nearly almost like a trillion. Okay. That's how big Abu Dhabi Mudabla is. Now, why am I telling you this? I'll, 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 I'll come to that. Okay. November 2020. Now, that was March where you had with Google. Then you had in June that was with India Geo. Now, you have November where they uh, announced the acquisition of UK life science company Envision. Okay. Which is a biopharmaceutical company and medical device company. Uh, to commercialize new compounds for medical strategies and communication. Fine. So, Mudabla is doing really well. Very, very fucking well. Very big, very powerful, unbelievable. It's like, wow. Okay. <clears throat> it's like, wow. Again, I'm saying it. Wow. Okay. Now, why did I tell you this? Mudabla owns Arab tech. Let that sink in once again. Mudabla owns Arabtech. So a company that has nearly a trillion, one trillion, you remember like how Mohammed bin Salman was saying, one trillion, two trillion, we will have Saudi Aramco, two trillion, four billion, gazillion. Okay. Abu Dhabi actually has that kind of money. Fuck loads of money. Why do you think U.S. loves UAE? Why do you think Israel loves UAE? UAE has the money. Okay? So now, let's, let's understand now. So you have a trillion, almost a trillion dollar company or trillion dirham company, a trillion dirham that owns Arab Tech. So now what is Arab Tech? Let's do a little bit of history. 
Arab Tech was founded in 1975 by Riyad Burhan Kamal. What a nice name, Riyad Burhan Kamal. Da, da, da. Okay, fine. Okay. The revenue in 2012, tol, you know, like our Malayali say, tol, you know, tol, was 5.66 billion. So in 2012, that's eight years ago, was 5.66 billion. Net income, 100 and 1392 billion. Total assets, uh, no, 1392, I think it's million. Total assets, 12.59 billion. It has billions of assets. Employees, let this sink in, 42,000. 42,000. Can you imagine how many employees that is? 42,000. And once again, it belongs to Mudabla. Nearly a trillion dollar company, trillion dirham company. It's part of that. So now, let's go a little bit of history. Uh, Arab Tech was one of the most heavily traded and largest construction group in the Middle East, not just UAE. They had residential, commercial, oil and gas, infrastructure, power, facilities management, anything that is big, they were in that. They operated construction, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, oil and gas, infrastructure, power, and other segments. It was into high-rise towers, buildings, residential villas. It took uh, drainage, electrical, mechanical, plumbing, contracting, civil uh, construction works, infrastructure works, real estate department uh, investment, development, leasing, managing activities, buying and selling properties, third-party properties, fabrication of steel structures, precast panels, manufacturing and transporting mixed concrete, literally everything that is big, everything that forms the foundation for UAE in construction, it was there. Even their website, I checked their website, its website is also still there. Now, this company, such a big bloody company, which was owned by a billion, nearly a trillion dirham company, you think it doesn't have money? It has shed loads of money. Okay, fine. Let's look at the honorable projects. If you see in any magazine, they'll say Burj Khalifa, Burj Al Arab, Lourdes Museum, Terminal 1 of Dubai International Airport, Passenger Terminal, that is Al Maktoum International Airport. Okay, this is what they say. But if you dig a little deeper, let's dig a little deeper. Arab Tech was literally tied up with all the big names including Saudi's Bin Laden group. Just Google search how big that was. They had construction in Abu Dhabi, Jordan, Pakistan, Qatar, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Syria. Arab Tech Holding was the first company to go public in the UAE. Arab Tech was listed in the Dubai financial market in 2005. Its IPO stock has been traded like no one else's business. In 2010, the financial market awarded Arab Tech Holding as the most traded stock, the most valuable stock from 2000 to 2010. So why am I telling you this? People who had to make shitloads of money, shitloads of money, they made shitloads of money. It's the like boys at the top. It's the decision makers. It's the CEOs. It's the board of directors. They made shitloads of money. In fact, in May 14th, 2014, they even signed a sponsorship agreement with Premier League giants Manchester City FC, I don't know what is FC, fuck all, okay, FC, to sponsor the football club for three years. 2011, they had a joint venture even in India, that is Rajay, Rajay Developers of India, and they signed contracts of 204 million in joint venture, and uh, they had a 56-story, 196-high residential complex known as Raheja Revant in Goregaon. Okay, Gur, Gura, Gurg, Gurgaon, okay, Gurgaon, whatever. Okay, 2013, this one I know very well. They formed a joint venture with Samsung Engineering of South Korea to undertake large-scale projects, oil and gas, infrastructure, both in Middle East, North Africa, and bid for contracts ranging from $3 billion to $10 billion. Just let those numbers sink in. How many billions of dollars worth of contracts? When you do the contracts, you get shitloads of money. Where did this money go? Now. 2012, Arab Tech won $11 billion contract to build the Abu Dhabi airport, midfield terminal, and joint venture with the Turkish TAV and CCC. Okay. 
But now in 2015, let this sink in. Until now, you're making billions of dollars, billions. But 2015, you post a loss of $626 million. How is that possible? Here's my question. How the fuck is it possible? I'm making millions. Oh, I finished this project, landmark project. I'm part of the Abu Dhabi government. You want, uh, you can't say no, whatever rates you just throw. They are taking shitloads of money, millions and billions. Remember the example I gave you? This main guy, millions and billions. Now, after you get all the money, you have the money. What happened to the money? Where the fuck did it go? You're being heavily traded. Where did that money go? Who took the money? Big question. Okay, then. So, 2015, you post, okay, a big loss of $626 million. Okay, fine. 2015. 2016, Arab Tech won $1.1 billion, $1.1 billion to build a new terminal at Bahrain International Airport under the name Bahrain International Airport Modernization Program. Uh, once again, okay, fine. So, you said yes to the contract. You delivered. You got the money. How is it possible that you claim a loss? How? How in the world is it possible? Let me give you some of the projects. I, I just did a little bit of research. Here are the projects that Arab Tech has delivered. Burj Khalifa, Infinity Tower, Lakta Center, Karachi Financial Towers, Ocean Heights, uh, Emirates Palace, Fairmount Hotel, The Address Downtown Dubai, Burj Al Arab, Jumeirah Beach Residence, Ritz called, sorry, Dubai Maritime City, Dubai International Financial Center Gate Village, Exhibition Center for Adnik. Now, these 14 projects that I gave you are the most fucking prestigious ones. Okay? Oil and gas. Mubara's Island gas processing plant, which is worth millions and millions. Airport development, airport, Dubai Airport, Dubai World Central. Stadiums, Gantut Grandstand, Dubai Sports City Stadiums, Residential Complex, Emirates Hills, Arabian Ranches, that Rahija Rebant in Goragao, India, Jumeirah Beach Residence, Mixed Use Developments, example Al Wahab City, Industrial and Maritime Projects, Abu Dhabi Shipbuilding Facility, and Mubara's Island Oil Processing Plant, Educational in Saudi Arabia and Princess Noura Bint Abdul Rahman University and oil and gas projects in Middle East and North Africa uh, with Samsung Engineering. They were also planning to enter Algeria, Angola, Azerbaijan, Libya and Turkmenistan. Okay. Now, a company of this size, a company that is doing such bloody prestigious projects, so much, you seriously expect me to believe they don't have any money? You seriously expect me to believe the money went poof? That they don't have any money to pay the vendors? The people who gave the manpower, the people who gave the raw materials, you took the raw materials, you took the manpower, you made all of them work and you delivered the project, you got the money and now you are telling them, sorry, I'm bankrupt. And now when you say, you seriously think, before they announced the bankruptcy, shareholders didn't know anything. Shareholders were sitting, oh, I paid $100 for the share. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen. You think they didn't end cash on their shares? You think the CEOs and board of directors didn't know that this was happening? They didn't end cash everything, all the end of service benefits, everything and cash out, jump out of the Titanic? Who's the, who are the people who are suffering? Who? Think. The people who supplied the materials, the people who supply manpower. Now, the problem here is, this is the government. You remember Mudabla? Mudabla is owned by who? It's the government. You can't touch them. If the government has to pay you money and says, I don't have the money, I'll pay you after six months. You have to shut your trap. If they say, I'll pay you after two years, let's shut your mouth. You cannot take Sheikh Mohammed or Sheikh Zayed or Sheikh any Sheikh to the court because end of the day, the court also belongs to them. What are you going to do? You'll show, hey, this is my joint venture. Oh, this is the, you know, banking document. Oh, this is the LC. They'll say, put it up your, put it up where the sun don't shine. That's what I'm going to tell you. Now, I checked with a couple of bankers. What they said is, 
you can, I don't know, just do your homework. It seems uh, supplier payments is around 6.3 billion supplier payments, roughly. Banks have to be paid around 1.5 billion, 1.5 to 1.7. Employees, not known how much. Other payments, not known how much. Now, and I found out from the banks, banks are not going to lose any money because it's backed by insurance. So, okay. So, who are the people who are going to suffer? The suppliers, the employees. And who are the suppliers? The suppliers are normal people like you and me, expats. Who are the employees? Normal people like you and me. Now, what's going to happen? The main guy, Abu Dhabi, nothing's going to happen. Shake, shake, baby shake. Nothing's going to happen. Big company, liquidated, poof, gone. Big guys, board of directors made their money, bye-bye. Shareholders sold the money. The idiots who bought it later on were the dumb jerks. They are fucked. So who's left? Suppliers and employees. And suppliers and employees form the expat community, the large expat community. Just roughly calculate. If there are 5,000 suppliers, you know, you, you remember I gave you from the last uh, 10 years, 20 years, all these projects that they did 10 to 20 years or 10 years, 10 years. Let's, let's take 10 years. 10 years, these people deliver these projects. Unpaid payments, let's roughly look at it as, say, five years. Okay, five years. One year pandemic, nobody is going to get paid. One year before that was a recession. So five years. In five years, if they undertook 10 mega projects, 10, I'm just giving you only 10, 10 mega projects, you seriously don't think that there would be around five to 7,000 suppliers, five to 7,000 companies. If in a company, small company, the guy is supplying, just say something small, let's say, uh, panels, let's say screws, let's say wood, let's say manpower, a small company. If that one person had 10 employees and those 10 people are not paid money, you think it will not impact him? You think it will not impact the employees? You think it will not impact the families? And if they are impacted, these people, when they have money, they go to shops to buy grocery shops. They go to uh, you know restaurants to eat food. They go to school. They send their children to school. You, you think like a domino effect will not affect all these people? See, this is where, you know, the rich get richer and the middle class get poorer and the poorer gets decimated. Now, what's going to happen? What's going to happen is five to 7,000 companies are going to shut down. And because of this, lots of people are going to be without jobs. Lots of people are going to default on their loans, on their payments. Lots of people are going to get cheated. Okay. Now, there is a company in Abu Dhabi whose name I don't want to take. It starts with the alphabet T. That's all I'll tell you. It's in Abu Dhabi. It's a, it's in, you know, this line of work. Okay. Contracting, electromechanical, whatever. T, its name is. This company, I heard, is purposely making sure that it pushes for this liquidation to actually happen through their contacts and connections. Why? So that when the when this collapses, they get all the businesses for them. See, to give you common sense, one, one very simple thing. If there is, let's say, one electromechanical company, big one, when it shuts down, they have plenty of employees, good employees. So they are without jobs. These other companies, competitors, they grab onto the employees and they don't pay them the actual salaries. If they are very talented, they bid for them. But if they are not so great, they will offer them half salary so they get the benefit. Then, next one is this big company, Electromechanical, it's shut down. So, all its customers, all its projects now are left abandoned. These other guys, they grab on like, you know, like vultures on a dead carcass. They grab onto it. Oh, yes, we have a better share of the market. So just think of it. If there were 10 electromechanical companies, five shut down. Now these five who are left, they will get these people's share. So before each company had one project each, five shut down. Now these five will get two, two projects each. 
So this is what is happening. So they are actually looking down to shut these big companies. And this company T that is based in Abu Dhabi is actually looking forward to shut down this company. They are more than happy because now they will get all the remaining projects. They'll get all this, this flood of uh, vendors, this flood of unemployed people. Not only them, many other businessmen, many other business companies, they will end up getting these guys at half the price. So now, how is it going to impact you? Uh, if you're a business owner, yes, it'll impact you. If you're an employee, the chances of you with the domino effect, you may end up losing your job or your company will negotiate your salary or they will force you to take a paid, uh, unpaid leave. Now, the Dubai government, the good side is they are doing their level best to bring in more business. But even Abu Dhabi, they're trying their level best to bring in more business. But the drawback is the existing projects which are already there, what they have done, they don't seem to be wanting to resolve this issue. And to tell you very honestly, Abu Dhabi doesn't gain, none of them gain anything by, by honoring their payments. Because they already took the money. So why should they honor their payments? They say, oh, fuck off. I don't want to pay you. It's liquidated. Go fly a kite. Go check who you want. So it's like, I took money from you. I took manpower from you. I completed a project. I got the money. And I've claimed, you know, I'm bankrupt. I don't have to pay you anything. So I got benefit from you. I got payment from them. So I have made shitloads of money. Why should I pay you back? So I feel this is, yes, the rich are going to get richer, but it's going to absolutely backfire. Now, what is the downside to this? The downside to this is the construction industry, the electromechanical industry, um, is going to really, really be hit very hard. If there is anybody who wants to bid for these projects, they are not going to want to bid. In fact, if you check EMR, why did EMR declare we are not going to stop construction? Because there's an over-fucking supply, man. A total oversupply. So there are going to be plenty of casualties. So for 2021, I would say be mentally prepared. You're going to see a massive, massive, huge um, uh, number of companies shut down. Lots of People, established players, people with lots of experience are going to be without a job. And, um, you know, it's going to be survival of the fittest where, you know, you literally apply for jobs. People will not even bother to call you unless you stand out. And if you do stand out, they will offer you a very difficult salary for you to swallow. Not like the days. If you are getting 20,000, people might literally offer you half. So that's what is going to happen. So this is what I wanted to share with you in terms of what is happening in UAE. You let me know if I'm right or wrong. You let me know if I'm right or wrong because I, you know, I tell you, whatever research I do, I get it from the market, okay? And I like to keep things real. So I just thought I'd share with you the actual facts of people losing um, their jobs, people losing money that is coming in. Like I said, the government has made sure that it got its money. But now the question is, what about normal lay people? And how would they survive? So this is what I wanted to share with you. Once again, uh, let me know your thoughts and comments down in the comment section below. And um, one last thing before I do sign off. Like I said, 15 more days. If you want to take advantage of the personal branding offer, the package or personal branding or you know resume rebrand or whatever, let me know. You just have 15 more days after which it ends. So I wish you all the best. Prepare yourself for next year because a lot of change is going to happen next year. It's going to be survival of the fittest. Remember, you don't know how to sell yourself. You don't know how to position yourself. Nobody's going to bother. And uh, yes, if you like my content, please do support the channel. Like, subscribe, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, put your comments down below. I definitely read them. And um, yes, if you'd like to donate to my channel to support for the content I give you, I accept donations. My contacts are put down below. Uh, feel free to uh, get in touch with me. Any information you have. This is me signing off. Take care. Goodbye.
Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best. (laughs) 